international transformation and success coach Myrna Morris-Young delivers life-changing strategies as the host of the Mindset Transformations radio show and podcast. Myrna shares these strategies from success achieved in her own personal journey and by interviewing other best-selling authors and coaches. Each show gives you practical tips on living your best life now by changing your mindset to change your life. I am grateful that you have tuned in today from all over the world. I believe that the Spirit of God led you here so that you can receive insight, revelation and knowledge to see the next step in front of you as God reveals his purpose and destiny in your life. And now, here's Coach Myrna. Welcome to the Mindset Transformation Radio Show. I'm your host, Coach Myrna, and today we have a very special guest. Special because he's also my friend and partner, Coach Dan Wooms. Welcome, Dan, to the Mindset Transformation. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Thank you. All right. So today, Dan is going to talk to us on the topic, how to program yourself for positive change. But in keeping with the theme of my show, I wanted to give you a tip of the week from Coach Myrna. And my tip of the week is how to create change when change is hard. And I'm going to take my tip of the week from the book called Switch, How to Change Things When Change is Hard, by Chip Heat and Dan Heat. So here are some of the facts about change. Number one, change is a process. Two, change is usually a situation problem and not a personal problem. Three, For anything to change, someone must behave differently. Four, to change someone's behavior, you must change someone's situation. And five, for change to stick, you must influence the person's heart and mind. Now, here's a story I found on the Internet and I'm going to share it with you to illustrate the above points. It's a story of a man called Arthur. You see, Arthur was an airborne parachuter. Jumping out of airplanes killed his knees, his back, and his legs. When he got out of the Army, he walked with a cane and couldn't do anything, so he gained a lot of weight. He could not support his weight, so he couldn't do traditional exercises. His health rapidly declined. The doctor at the VA clinic told him to just accept his fate that he would never walk normal again. One day, when Arthur was surfing the Internet, he came across Diamond Dallas Page doing yoga. He said to himself, I could do this. So he bought the DVD. He figured he can use his arm to support his weight and get a cardio workout. Arthur was 297 pounds when he started doing yoga, and he was only 5 feet 8. When he started his yoga exercises, he kept falling and falling, but he would just get back up again and try once more. Every day, he got better and better, and in 10 months, he had lost over 100 pounds. And not only could he walk without a cane, but he can run. It was absolutely an amazing story of what Dan was talking about. Change is usually situational. Arthur had a situational problem. Arthur taught himself to do yoga because he decided to take control of his life. He got his heart and mind in the game and changed the situation. Change is a process. To lead a process requires persistence. Arthur kept getting back up and trying again to do his exercises. When, when a change starts, it builds on itself. The better Arthur got at yoga, 
it motivated him to keep going. Small changes can snowball. Change really works unless it is motivated by feeling. Arthur wanted to feel better, to look better, and he started losing weight and getting better. And it motivated him to keep going. So that's my tip of the week from Coach Myrna, how to change when change is hard. And there could be nothing harder than trying to lose 100 pounds when you can't lose, use your legs. But the author found a way, and so can you. So, as I mentioned earlier, our guest today is also a Dan, <laughs> Dan Wombs. And he, I know, and he is a positive change guru. This is a space. So let's find out more about Dan. Dan Wombs is a life and business coach, an MBA professor, a facilitator for the Leadership Challenge, a writer, and an international speaker. He's also the creator of the Positive Change Workshop and facilitates his workshops in Portuguese, English, and Spanish. He has facilitated more than 118 Positive Change Workshops. He loves helping people and organizations to achieve their fullest potential. He is the co-author of the book, Strategic Leadership, and I have that here in Portuguese, but I'm not even going to attempt to say that, (laughs) and the author author of the upcoming book, Positive Change, One Life at a Time. Dan lives in Florida and spends his time between the U.S. and Brazil. As I mentioned earlier, Dan is also my partner. We do a video blog on YouTube every week called You Ask For It, where we answer questions sent in from our social media network. Like us on Facebook to become part of our community. You can search for Myrna Young Life Coach and Dan Wilms. And Dan Wilms is spelled D-A-N-W-I-L-L-M-S. Welcome to the show, Dan. It's a pleasure to have you share your expertise on how to program yourself for positive change. Welcome. Thank you, honey. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, who are listening to us. I was listening to your presentation, to your introduction, mm-hmm. and, and I got a little emotional, especially because of Arthur. His story is remarkable. It's remarkable. And also listening to you introducing me, that's so special. It's so, it shows how magic and wonderful life can yeah. be. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. I, I want to say thank you so is. much. You can do anything. Mm-hmm. To Rick Sherkin, thank you so much for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. And I would like to add something about the art and the changing situation. What I learned through the years, we're especially doing happiness labs in the U.S. and Brazil, is that change also requires direction. It is Action. very important that people understand that. But anyway, here I am. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. I am going to enjoy speaking to you because, you know, coaching is all about change. So, yeah, and you have, like I said, this is your space. Um, so tell our audience, you know, before we get into labs and things, tell us about your journey. Um, Dan and I met, actually, um, we graduated together from the University of Miami as coaches, so um, that's where the story picks up that I know, Dan. So tell us how you became a, a life coach and specifically um, focusing on positive change. I a very long story. I'm going to have to make it very, very short, but it starts like this. I started working in, in the countryside of Brazil where I was born when I was nine years old, just a little boy, because my family had a lot of family and money problems. When I was 11, I I watched my father hang himself. And it was the first very strong trauma episode I had in my life. A couple of years later, I was in bed talking to my mother. She was a little ill, and I slept. I fell asleep with her. And when I woke up, she was passing away, unfortunately. Wow. And oh, my gosh. 
it was, and that, by that time I was 21 years old, so I had a little, a little no, I had a huge panic attack. So I didn't know what to do, and I, car- I called a cab, and I carried her body to the cab. The cab driver refused to take me to the hospital because he was screaming at me and shame and saying she was dead. And I said, no, you were taking us to the hospital. And he did. I took her body to the hospital and I had to carry her body into the hospital. And right after that, I decided to leave my, ho- my, my hometown and I moved to the north of Brazil and I became a missionary. <laughs> Uh, because I needed to heal. I'm getting goosebumps. I never heard this part of the story. Wow. I don't yes. say it very often. Mm-hmm. I just felt compelled. Okay. And I, I needed to heal. And I figured to myself, I was 21, there would be no better way to heal than forgetting about myself. And I did. I worked there. I'm sorry. I'm very emotional. <laughs> It's been, it's been a long time and I don't talk about those things. Uh, yeah. But anyway, I, I went to the countryside, uh, to the north of Brazil, and I worked there as, as a volunteer for two years. Okay. And going through the process and seeing people, but by the time I got there, I thought I was the unluckiest person on earth. I thought my life I was know. the most miserable one. But... Yeah. When I started working in, in the poorest part of Brazil, I realized how actually blessed I was. Yeah. That, and I believe right there, it started my, my hunger for helping people and making a change, making a positive change. Yeah. And right now, I, it's very special because I believe my... My reason for life, it's what I do every day, 24-7, is bringing a positive change to people. And, and that's how everything starts. <laughs> well, that's a beautiful story. Yeah. Thanks. And, you know, um, the people that are tagged to be life coaches, that's what we want to do. We, you know, not too many people have your experiences, but something touched them in some way. And they want to help people because that's what life coaching is. It's a very selfless job where your your main focus is to helping people to lead better lives. So that is beautiful. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, um, we're starting off very well here. And um, let's take a quick station break, and we'll be right back to hear more from Coach Dan on his Positive Change workshops. Be right back. Stay tuned. Welcome to Mindset Transformations Radio Show with your host, Coach Myrna. Do you feel the need to do more with your life? Are limiting beliefs holding you back from true success? Enjoy a unique blend of interviews, discussions, and transformation coaching in every show. Get the tools for success. The Mindset Transformation Radio Show with your host, Coach Myrna. Welcome back to the Mindset Transformation Radio Show. I'm your host, Coach Myrna, and today we are talking to Coach Dan Wilms, and I just love his story. Um, I just love how God has moved him and how God has put him in the position right now and sending him right back to Brazil to help the people in Brazil. So I love that because I know that that's where Dan spends most of his time. So um, one of the first things I want to ask you, um, Dan, is to explain to us what exactly is positive change. Well, it's such a short question for such a long answer. <laughs> Go right ahead. Take your time. <laughs> uh, I, I, I will try to make. I will try to make it to make it short. Uh, positive change is a desire that I had to bring something that changed my life, to, to share that with other people. When I graduated at uni, before I graduated, before I finished my, my uh, 
where we, we met at the University of Miami, our, my coaching uh, classes. A little before that, I decided to sell my granite business in Florida and, and move back to Brazil to, to start teaching leadership because I also graduated in leadership in Chicago through the Leadership Challenge program. Uh, when I got to Brazil and I tried to teach leadership, I realized that it wasn't my thing. I mean, I didn't want to, ha- because I was there teaching people who made like 30,000 bucks a month. <laughs> and making like, people, right? driving yeah. like amazing cars and like these big yeah. time CEOs. Yeah. And I did that for a year, and, I, and one day I was sitting there looking at, at, one of, at this guy and thinking, what am I doing to my life? I didn't come this far to do this. I want to teach people who want and he, who need. You know what? I want to help people who actually need help. Need help, right. Yeah. That's when I dropped the leadership thing. My family freaked out. <laughs> And I decided to do something else. By the time, I had no idea what to do, so I created labs. Okay. Uh, to an, and in these labs, I would ask people how their lives were. Uh-huh. And from those labs, I created the positive change movement. Okay. Uh, and and it's all, right now, it's all based in positive psychology. It's all about behaviors and this and that. Uh, and Positive Change is a workshop we do in very different um, shapes. For example, I have one shape, which is the pocket version. I do in Miami every first Sunday of the month for one year. I am doing, until 2018, I will be doing every first Sunday from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m., at Unity on the Bay here in Miami. I'm in Miami now. That's only three hours. There is the program that I do uh, a retreat, which is the whole weekend from Friday night to Sunday night uh, in a hotel. Everything is covered. It's very special. There are other portions. For example, I do a lot of in company where we do one full day from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., and, and also there is the online program where people sign up. They receive all the books, all the material. We made amazing workbooks. We have the positive change cards. Uh, they are a huge success between psychologists, therapists, uh, and, and coaches. So when people decide to do the online program, they sign up, they get all the materials at home, all the books, and they go on their own uh, path, uh, path. I mean, they, they can decide how fast they can do the course because it's all through videos. Okay, that, that, that's awesome. So um, uh, explain a bit more because I got lost in that part where mm-hmm. uh, it's a psychology and you mentioned something about the shape, the pocket version. Um, so... What is the foundational principle of Mm -hmm. the psychology behind positive change? That's probably a better way to ask the question. Okay. Let me see. Do you mind to say this again? It's my broken English. That's all right. You (laughs) said the positive change is all based on the psychology of behavior, right? So explain uh, that. On on positive psychology. Right. Right. Exactly. Okay. What is oh, that explain exactly? That. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. I understood. Yes. Okay. Well, it's based, I also took a class called the um, the science of happiness. It's okay. a very in- interesting class at Berkeley University in California, okay. and it is about it's 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 about it's it's how science uh, can help us to be happier, can help us to live a better life. And 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 they and the studies have shown that what we call happiness, the source of happiness, is behaviors. Okay. 
Okay. And then uh, when I learned that, what I decided to do, I decided to have labs. When I say labs, I mean I invited people to come to these labs, to these meetings, and they usually lasted for, from 8 to 12 hours each meeting. And I would ask them and interview them to find out how, the, how life was, what was missing, how was, uh, how was the struggle, what were the struggles they have, how was the relationship, the money, the dreams, and all of that. Okay. I wanted to have a good overview of their, how life was for these people. Okay. Uh, then, after that, I would apply the tools that I learned from all, from all the different classes that I took, and, and I could see which, uh, I mean, and I could see what worked better for those people. Okay. I did that for two years, nonstop. I had 24 labs between Brazil and U.S. with 400 people. And it was so much work, honey. It was so much money. <laughs> yeah. So much traveling. You mean you did this for free? Most of the times I did for free, yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, because, I mean, you cannot you charge research, people. Right. Mm-hmm. I was doing research. I mean, mm-hmm. there were even times that I had to pay. <laughs> like, I had to pay people, the expenses for people to take the bus. Mm-hmm. Or I had to pay lunch for everybody. I had to travel to those locations. It was a lot of money, a lot of time. And my family at home, they thought I was crazy. <laughs> But it was very, very special. You've shown. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, okay. All right. So I'm understanding it now. So, um, so I, so I'm to understand that the, um, the foundation of your positive change message, um, mm-hmm. is behaviors that can lead to happiness. Would that be the correct way to say that? Yes. It is, yes, it is. And also the foundation is, the foundation is data, data. It's information. It's all the data I collected from okay. all those people. And, and now, so going through that process, I was able to sort out the best practices, what okay. worked the best okay. for the people. So right now I have had... Uh, over 100 workshops, and these are very long, at least 10, 12 hours workshops. Okay. Uh, and right now we are in a point that it, what we teach in the workshop is, is exactly what worked the best for the majority of people. So, and for me it was very, very interesting because many times uh, we go to classes and we learn ideas from people. We learn what, the, what they think about stuff. Or we learn, or somebody, for example, had an idea and wrote a book about it. Right. Had an experience and wrote a book right. about it. Yeah. What we are doing here, we are using science, we are doing research, and we're able to teach not what we believe it's good, not what we believe it's important, but what the data show us that works best for the majority of people. Does it make sense to you? Oh, yeah, it makes perfect sense to me. So, and that's basically why you had the sample size of the 400, because, um, and that's basically what statistics all th- is all about. Um, yeah, they would, um, in all these studies that they do, they have, you know, um, one person, one group doing this, and you know that doesn't work, and then they have another group doing this, and, and but yeah, um, so usually when they do that, they track the findings over a period of time, and I guess that's why you said you did it for two years, so that you can track whether progress is being made. Um, so when you do your workshops now, um, do you keep in touch, and or how do you how do you track um, the the success? Oh, we have, uh, I call, we, we call it VIP 
Facebook group. It's a community okay. on Facebook okay. that once people who take the class, they are added to the community. That's and awesome. and we, we, we do lives. We do a lot. We do, like, every week we do a Facebook live. We okay. interview them. I interview them. That's they beautiful. share what's going on. What's they ask for help. Yeah, that is absolutely great. I love that. That's really a movement. I think you called that you called that you called it that earlier but that is absolutely a great movement because it will build and, momentum as yeah. people yeah as people make changes in their lives and they tell someone else it's it's an energy and i and i and it I, is an energy yeah. <laughs> it's an energy it, it, and i you know i'm not even in the group but i can i can understand <laughs> the dynamics of that energy it's beautiful it, 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 and especially and when you're working with poor people that want to do better instead of rich people that wants to get richer. It's it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, let, let let me say one thing about it. Okay. I, I don't want uh, I, I, uh, people nowadays who take my class. It's people from all over. In my labs, for those labs, I was very specific. I invited people I, because I wanted to have an intelligent opinion about the practices we were doing in the positive change. So the majority of people who took, who took part in my labs, they were coaches, psychologists, therapists, doctors, lawyers. Uh, then at one point, then what I would do, I would put 50% this kind of people and the other 50%, I would look for gays, straights. I would look for teenagers. I would look for people who had no job okay. or people who, who just okay. got divorced because I wanted to have people from all over That's to good. see if, if it would make sense to all of these people. So it's not, awesome. this is not a class for the poor. For the poor people, right? It yes. is a right. class. Well, yeah. For everybody. Well, like, I know that's where it started, you said. But, um, yeah, that's pretty good because happiness is really it's, – it's, I know you're going to tell me that in a minute, but from what I know before talking to you or before what I'm going to learn from you now, um, happiness is not um, conditional on how much money you have because I remember watching this movie once. This was a, a girl that was trying to get into coaching, and she had us over to her house. And she played this movie that was absolutely amazing. And I've been trying to find it since. And I have, well, I probably didn't look very hard, but I haven't found it <laughs> since. But it was, <laughs> it was a movie on happiness. And basically what they did is they showed the poorest people in India being incredibly happy that they have a roof that's, you know, um, they're sleeping on the ground, but they have a roof over their head and their children is alive or they have – they make like, you know, $60 a year or something, but they're incredibly happy because maybe love, family, whatever it is, and then you would have somebody in Hollywood that's, you know, a millionaire and taking drugs in order to get through the day because they're unhappy. So you, I'm glad that you are, you know, taking a cross-section to find out what really makes people happy because you're right. It has absolutely nothing to do with wealth and status. In fact, those people are the ones that are usually unhappy. That's from my data, <laughs> right? It is actually the, – the, it's very important that you, you mention that because this is very interesting. Yes. Uh, we have to understand that having money – or having no money doesn't impact your happiness. We also have to understand that having money is amazing. It's so good. But that doesn't represent your happiness. Well, people in India are happier, not because they are poor or because they are rich. They are happy because it's a reference. The thing is, how our brain works is very interesting. If that. you don't know, you can't compare. If you don't know, you can't compare. So for the white people who have money, there is a, white people who have more conditions usually are not the happiest because 
they have more access to things. They can compare things more often. Yeah. They see other people. The moment you see other things, you can compare. You always compare that you have less than somebody else. The, you can have so much, but there is always someone who has more than you. And, you and you the more options... Happy. There yeah. was a study a couple of years ago made in Harvard. They believe that happiness was about choices. The more choices you have, the happier you are. And, and they found out it's not true. It's the opposite. Sure. The more choices you have, the more confused you get, the more expectations you create, yeah. the more anxious you become, and the unhappier, the unhappier you are. So may, because I saw the same in Brazil, Myrna. I went to very poor communities in Brazil, and those people were extremely happy. Yeah. And you would talk to them about Things that for us are very normal. For example, driving a car. And some of those people never got into a car because basically there were no cars in the little island they live. So they didn't have the reference. They didn't know what it... So uh, this is very interesting. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty good. Um, uh, Yes, yeah, so we're at the point where now you are going to tell us mm-hmm. the secret to happiness. <laughs> okay. I'm waiting with bated breath. <laughs> okay, the thing is very basic. There is a professor that I love. I love her, co- her name. is Sonja Lyubomirsky. Okay, and she has, she has studied happiness in labs for more than 20 years. She is a reference in the world on happiness. And she, her, excuse me, and her studies show that happiness comes from three sources. First off, 50% of happiness comes from DNA. So it comes from your family. It's very important that. 50% DNA. 10% is circumstances where you are right now, the car you drive, the, the, the job you have, the relationship you are in, where you work, what you dress, what you eat, and so on. That's only 10%. And we think that's the whole 100% many times. Uh, and 40%, 40% is intentional activities or behaviors. So I'm going to say that again. 50% of happiness comes from DNA. 10% circumstances. 40% behavior. So in the short run, there is nothing we can do about DNA. In the long run, our behaviors can change our DNA, which is incredible. And, And also in the long run, our behaviors can change the other 10%, which is the circumstances, yeah. like the job you have, if, you are not in, if your relationship is unhappy. Many times people are, are in unhappy places, but they cannot just pack everything and go away. They have to organize everything. Right. So the secret to happiness is lies la- in the 40%, the DNA, I'm the sorry, not the DNA, the, <laughs> the behavior. <laughs> so mm-hmm. see, the, let me start again. I'm sorry, honey. Mm. The secret to, happen, to happiness is in the 40%, which is behavior. All the activities you do every day with an intention. Mm-hmm. That's the secret. So in our labs, what we help people to understand is what are the behaviors that make them happy or unhappy? And one thing that we do, it's been so cool, uh, we, to know which behaviors make you happy. You may think, okay, uh, I, watching a game make me happy. Having a beer make me happy. Or... Going for a walk make me happy. Okay. Or sex. 
We, st- we oh, I'm sorry? Or sex. Oh, my Lord, honey, that, that makes me extra happy. I'm just talking about the basic stuff. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what do you mean? Go ahead, right? <laughs> uh, what, so what happens is, uh, what I was going to say, oh, you, 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 I got sidetracked here, you see? <laughs> <laughs> it feels like I am in our show now. Uh, right. Where was that? Okay, you're saying that the behaviors, people might think that certain behaviors make them happy, but I'm, I thought you were going to the fact that, you know, they don't know what makes them happy. I, probably where you're getting. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So to understand the behavior, we have to, to dig deeper. We have to go a little deeper. And when I say deeper, I mean uh, where does your behavior come from? So I help, we help those people to understand where, the beha- where those behaviors that they think make them happy come from. That's where we help them to understand their personal values, the core values. Because everything you do, no matter what, every decision you make, everything you do comes from your values. So the key to happiness right now, I'm, you see, I am digging deeper and deeper. The key to happiness is values. Because your values are the foundation of your behaviors. Your behaviors are the foundation of your happiness. Okay. Do you follow me? Yeah, yeah I follow you. Um, uh, very true. I'm not connecting the dots still a little bit because I'm thinking mm-hmm. of, um, let's say that someone is unhappy because their marriage is not working. So is that mm-hmm. situational or no? Let me pick a better one. Someone that, is that's unhappy. That's the 10%. Well, I know, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So someone is unhappy, maybe. I'm trying to think of, of a behavior that would make you unhappy that you're, um, uh, it comes from your core. Help me out with that one. A behavior that makes you unhappy that comes from your core. It can be an, an addiction, for example, uh, watching ah. porno. Okay, or all right, all right, okay, all right, okay, right, right. Okay, right, okay, good. That's example. actually pretty yeah. good. That's now, now I'm making, now I'm connecting the dots, right? Mm-hmm. Or right, somebody going to the club um, and trying to find a, a guy, and you know, always picking up the wrong guy. Got you, got you. Yeah. I got it. I just wanted mm-hmm. to connect the dots so that I can understand where you're going. So, yeah, so once they understand what, or even, even yeah, like drinking wine or something, you can't stop drinking it, and you, you know, yeah. It's not exactly an addiction, but you, you, you still continue doing it, but you know it's bad for you. I got it. Yeah, so, yeah. Right. for example, also another, another yeah. behavior that it's bad for you, it's fighting, you know, being rude. Being rude to people is a yeah. behavior that I've been yeah. studying this week. Yeah. Uh, because uh, the last week, I, I do Facebook Lives every morning for 30 minutes, and it's been wonderful. And yeah, last week, the topic. subject was yeah, how to, I, ru- I how to deal with rude life, people. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and how to deal with rude people. And, and, being, yeah. and being rude is yeah. a behavior. A behavior, right. Yeah. That's that a very can, good one. Because that it's a reaction behavior. Happiness. And you're right. Yeah. You've got you to get the source, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's good. Okay. Well, my, um, you know, um, my experience, just supporting that a little bit, I haven't come at it from your point of view, but I've come at it from consciousness. And Mm -hmm. um, consciousness is, you know, how I change my behaviors by just understanding that I have no control over other people and the only person I can control is myself. And I'm, I'm conscious of, I'm aware of things around me and that kind of thing. So mm-hmm. I'm not as externally um, controlled as internally controlled. So that's, that's, that's the way that I go about it. But that's, um, you know, as a coach, um, you know, you've got to pick, uh, you know, what works for people and, and how they can, you know, and understanding yourself, understanding your true self. Is, is the foundation to actually making any kind of change. So you're, you're doing it perfectly. Awesome. All right. Well, um, uh, 
let's take our last break, and we will be right back to wrap up the show with Coach Dan. I am having a great time listening to this scientific way to be happy because everybody, and I mean everybody, 100% of us would like to be happy in this world. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back. If you are listening to this broadcast, it means that you are hungry for growth, hungry for change, hungry for insights, revelation, and knowledge. Whatever you need in your life, you will receive it today. For the past 20 years, Myrna has been an entrepreneur. As past CEO of Royal Livery Limousine Service and now CEO of My Helps Coaching and Consulting Services, Myrna has achieved good success. Awarded Entrepreneur of the Year, Myrna knows what it takes to help you be successful. Myrna helps her coaching clients to design a practical plan to close the gap of where they are today and where they would like to be tomorrow. In business, relationships, health, or career goals, that is why Myrna is offering a free one-hour strategy session valued at $150, totally free, no strings attached. If you are listening right now, go to www.MyrnaYoungHelps.com slash contact dot U.S. and sign up now for a free session with Coach Myrna. She has helped business owners and other clients just like you overcome their obstacles and set them on a path to success. Take advantage of this offer today. Go to www.MyrnaYoungHelps.com slash contact dot U.S. right now. Welcome back to the Mindset Transformation Radio Show and Podcast. I'm your host, Coach Myrna Young, and today we have been speaking to Coach Dan Wombs, and like I introduced him, he's my friend and partner, but, you know, sometimes, not unless you ask the questions, you get the answers, but I'm extremely impressed with the work that he's doing and how he's helping, you know, um, his his uh, movement gain happiness because that is such a fundamental right to everyone. So um, we were talking of the positives and the way to find happiness, but let's do a comparison with this next question. Why do you think that so many people are unhappy in the world? Uh, Oh, my gosh. I believe because of information. Look how crazy it is. Because of information. Uh, Understand one thing. I believe in my data, my research shows that happiness comes from behavior. Behavior comes from values. And research has shown that uh, until the the beginning of 90s, a, rib, a normal person, don't ask me what is a normal person, okay? <laughs> but a normal person would have a huge, a huge change of values every 25 years. So every 25 years, people would be asking, oh my gosh, why am I here for? What have I done to my life? Why am I? And they would be questioning themselves every 25 years because they would have a huge shift in values every 25 years. Mm-hmm. After the 90s, this process is happening not every 25 years, but every three to five years. So that this is a huge change. And so, wow. that so many people are unhappy right now because why, what makes you unhappy? Because you start questioning why am I doing this? Why don't I have this? Why don't I have that? Why aren't I living somewhere else? And this and that. So those questions, they come from a shift in values. Okay. So that's why so many people are unhappy because it's well, becoming okay. more and more common to, to, to ask those questions. Wow. So in order to avoid that, making this shift, how do you, what do you think is the, is the answer? You don't avoid that. I don't think it's about avoiding. It's about harmony. It's about... Uh, Achieving harmony. Oh, okay. Oh, it's about watching what's happening in your life, 
having information, having knowledge, and understanding that first, you are not going crazy. Second, you are not miserable. And third, you are not in the wrong life or in the wrong place. Oh, wow. What's happening is there is happening a change in, uh, in your perspective, in your values. So once you have that knowledge, then you start managing. Because, Myrna, all this happiness or unhappiness thing, it's about managing your emotions. So the key, the key here is having knowledge and uh, knowing that whenever you are going through that process, it's just a situational thing. It, it shall pass, but <laughs> it is how you, you work through it. Wow, yes. Wow, this is good. You're ministering to me. This is very good <laughs> because it's true that um, – you know that if you go back into the science that you're talking about, is that nothing, it, perspective is, is so important because until you acknowledge something, it doesn't exist. So your perspective is all that's important. You know, like they always say, it's not what's happening to you, it's how you're reacting to what's happening to you. Because until you acknowledge it, it doesn't exist. So... Yeah, changing your perspective is very, very big. It's awesome. Yes. Yep. And you cannot change your perspective if you do not understand what's going on. Right. And it's because you, to, to change your perspective, you need direction. You cannot see if you don't understand what's going on. Right. And again... If someone points it out to you, whether you're in a workshop or somebody tells it to you, until you acknowledge it, it doesn't exist either. So in, in opposite ways. I mean, you, um, the, 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 you know, once you acknowledge something, you know it's there. So if you're unhappy yeah. because someone is doing something to you, it's because you acknowledge it. Um, some people live, most people live life unconsciously, and then they wouldn't even acknowledge it until someone points it out to them and say, hey, you know, you're doing this, because they walk around and they're not even aware of, of what they're doing. So, yeah, perspective, acknowledgement, um, some point, somebody pointed it out to you, someone giving you direction. Yeah, it's all important. And, again, that's one of the things that coaching does, because a lot of people have blind spots. They're not even aware that being, they're being rude, much less to uh, work on not being rude. They're not even aware of it. So um, coaching um, highlights your blind spots. So, all right, in the last few minutes that we have on the show, um, do you have an exercise to, that you can leave with our audience on how to, I don't know, maybe understand your values or perspectives? Or what are you going to um, leave to help them with their happiness barometer? I think what it would be interesting and helpful. It's very basic, but it's very powerful at the same time. I wanted to get a piece of paper or a notebook, whatever you want. Get a piece of paper. Take a couple minutes, uh, or you can even go for a walk, listen to some music. I love, I love walking. Then you can type on your telephone. But after you do that, I want you to get a white piece of paper, like an A4 kind, you know, mm-hmm. Uh, and write on it the 12 most important things in your life right now. It can be family, money, health, friends, happiness, uh, security, uh, uh, money, I already said, sex, pleasure, uh, food, whatever you want, okay? My, My friends, my kids, my house traveling, anything. So you have to write down 12 most important things in your life. And I want you to look at those 12 most important things. Then I want you to circle the ones that you are not happy with. The ones that it's, they are not giving you uh, anything good or very little thing, very few good things. So once you circle those, I want you to look at them and start questioning why 
they are not that good? Why you don't give them a, a thumbs up and then create one action to put that into practice. For example, let's say in one of those 12 things you put family and family you circle because you're having troubles with your family, you are not spending enough time with your family, family is a mess. So you get family and you, write, and you circle it. Then you create an action. What is an action? It is one thing that you put into action. For example, what can, then you have to write down one thing that you do to align that, to put that into action. It may be uh, Saturday night, I will take my family to the movies, okay? Mm-hmm. Or Sunday, I will go to church with my family. Or on Monday, I will uh, go out for dinner or I'm going to cook dinner to my family. And this and that. For example, if you put their money, for Come example. Come home early. <laughs> Come home Which early. Yes. The problem, the dem- right? yes. Spending too much the time at work. Cell phone right. off, mm-hmm. Put the yes. damn mm-hmm. cell phone in the drawer. So, you know, and spend quality time. And for yes. let's say money, you circle down money. What can you do to, to work on that? You can say, for example, I can go to my bank account and see if I actually have money. <laughs> because many people, <laughs> or I can check my credit, how my credit cards are. Because many people, they just put things on credit card and they don't even go there to look at it because they think if they don't look, they won't know how bad in shape they are. It's a lie. In the back of your mind, it's always reminding you that you are, you are broke. So you, what is knowledge? Knowledge is looking at it and being able to manage so it's what you, you said earlier, you have to acknowledge. Yep. If you acknowledge something, then you can change. Yep. Oh, wow. That is awesome. Wow. I am so happy that you shared your knowledge and expertise with me as well as with our audience, Dan. That is powerful. So now tell our audience how they can um, get in touch with you um, uh, online or in Miami or however. Well, they can, well go to, right? yeah, they can go to my website. Mm-hmm. My website is called positivechange.us. Again, positivechange.us. There they can find all the information about myself or they can go to Facebook and they can like my fan page, which is Dan, D-A-N, Wilms, W-I-L-L-M-S, W-I-L-L-M-S, Dan Wilms. I look better on Facebook. I always tell people. <laughs> and, of course, You're they can watch our show, are right? You for a, are you fishing for a compliment? <laughs> oh, I am. I am out. <laughs> Yes. All right. Well, um, did you want to leave a phone number, or that's all? It is. Yes, my cell phone is seven seven two four eight five one seven three two seven seven two four eight five one seven three two, and that's also my WhatsApp. We use WhatsApp a lot right now, which is a, a wonderful tool. Yeah, it is. When someone is out of the country, yeah. I use it yeah. too for my um, my Canadian friends, or you know, when I have people traveling to the the Caribbean or so. So that's awesome. All right, well, we are fresh out of time. Thank you for tuning in to the Mindset Transformation Radio Show and podcast. Um, this this radio show will be on my iTunes. Um, podcast. I um, would love for you to subscribe to it. Um, just search on the Coach Myrna. Um, it's also going to be on YouTube, which is my company is My Helps, M-Y-H-E-L-P-S. And you can also check out um, my video blog and my website if you want any kind of personal coaching or um, you also want to you know, listen to one of my, my past shows. 
Dan was amazing and fantastic, and every week I try to bring you guests that can deposit something into you so that you can live your best life now. So um, until next time. Um, thank you so much, by the way. Honey, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So thank you, Dan, for being on the show, and um, I love it. So you definitely will want to listen to this again because Dan did um, leave some really positive change message um, on this um, broadcast. So thank you all, and you have yourself a pleasant evening. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye.